All right, everyone, it's time to praise Donald Trump for a foreign policy success uh, meted out years after he was no longer in office, namely the Abraham Accords. Yes, you remember the semi-normalization of relations throughout the Middle East uh, with Israel under the Abraham Accords? And uh, John Bolton was, uh, sp it was spinning around in circles and John McCain spinning in his grave, actually, because, oh my God, a little bit more stability broke out in the Middle East. Where are we going to test all of our toys? It's a big problem. Sort of like they hated the uh, rapprochement with North Korea and for some reason berated Donald Trump for uh, saluting a general there, even though that's customary and, and proper. Uh, it was a very interesting time and the TDS was flowing. The Abraham Accords have been a success. Um, uh, Iran just attacked Israel the other day. They launched hundreds of missiles and drone strikes on Israel. 99% of them were just knocked right out of the sky. I mean, they were, they were swept aside with almost no effort whatsoever. Um, showing a fairly beefy military response, but it wasn't just Israel doing that. Iron Dome was co-developed with the United States. Trump, by the way, wants a similar system for the U.S. Eh, I'm not sure exactly how pragmatic that is, unless you're just putting it above big cities. And if there is, like, a major conflict, it's the cities that you want destroyed because, you know, <laughs> cities suck anyway. It's the countryside you'd want to defend. Put it up over the uh, small organic farms over Amish country or something like that if they'll have them. An Iron Dome hell. But there were also uh, sorties flown by the U.S. and the U.K. And also in cooperation with other nations. Saudi Arabia. The Jordanians sent up a few planes actually to help out because of the strikes. It shows a solidification of Western influence in an area that has been real iffy in the political sphere, generally speaking. So with relatively good relations with Egypt and with Turkey in NATO and with the cooperation of the Saudis, etc. And the Saudis, partially it's self-serving in their capacity because they have to deal with the Yemeni Houthis. Uh, it, it's become a big problem, especially for shipping. And the Saudis love to ship lots of oil. They also have a problem with Iran organically. Of course, they're competing major powers within the region. Um, but, but with that level of cooperation, uh, it, it's something that you wouldn't have seen like 10 years ago. It's something that would have been, it would have, it would, it, with the uh, data sharing between the uh, military apparatuses of these nations and, and with the US, UK, etc., that are part of this general accord, this general net of nations, it allows for much greater coordination. We probably couldn't have pulled it off 10 years ago. Iron Dome still would have been able to pull it off, but you would have seen damage, you would have seen casualties. Trump, ironically, with the striking of the Abraham Accords that he pushed so heavily, and even got praised by liberal commentators when he got it passed through, Trump may have stopped World War III. Again, I mean, he stopped it the first time by beating Hillary Clinton, because uh, we've seen what her foreign policy would mean, and trust me, she would have started a major war. She would have done it just to prove that she's got the toys that make the noise and she's the big boss lady in the room. She would have done it for entirely for aesthetic purposes. Well, these guys think that they can kill, hmm, well, let's see what a vagina can do. Yeah, I can be a little bit deadly, you know? <laughs> just ask those Trojans. Uh, but anyway, she would have done that. So he stopped that. Uh, that's World War III 1.0. Now 2.0 is the Abraham Accords staving off any real legitimate damage to Israel from the Iranian attack. Israel gets to, to, gets to praise itself, say, yeah, look, people, see how great Iron Dome is. Ha <laughs> ha, fuck Iran. So that can smooth things over. Netanyahu, if, if there had been a bunch of casualties and damage, Israel would have been forced into a very quick response against Iran. They wouldn't be able to sit down and talk about it. They would have had to scramble the fighters immediately and go apeshit. It would have caused a major regional conflict. With the Abraham Accords in place, Iran's strike can be seen as largely symbolic. Little bit of infrastructure damage again, I don't know that there was a single casualty. Hundreds of missiles and rockets failed to penetrate the air and, and anti-missile defenses uh, in that area. No casualties, so no, no grieving families to worry about, no protests in the street if you don't do anything. Netanyahu does have to respond, but it can be a token response. There's a way out, in other words. There would not have been a way out 10 years ago. It would have been a significant war, possibly the dawn of World War III. Donald Trump may have saved all our asses again, and he's not even in office anymore. So, yeah, <laughs> there's one for him. That's about all. Peace out.